happening lads and lasses and in today's video we will be reviewing the new challenger 2f that recently dropped with war from the patch 1.99 now this is the second challenger 2 for britain that we get as you can see hold on come obviously it comes right after the original challenger 2 and it's basically just an upgraded armor package version it gets the same gun um it obviously it gets this new Dorchester 2F package, I'll show you what it looks like stock, you get that, so basically the only thing you're really missing is your little pizza table on the top of it. It still uses the same L26 round as the original Chally 2, um, obviously it's going to weigh a lot more as well, so mobility in this thing really does suffer at the very start, before you obviously get all your engine upgrades. Um, obviously the thermal netting doesn't, really, doesn't work on this, it's not been modelled yet. And uh, one feature that I did like about this tank from the very start is that it gets smoke grenade stock, which I find very useful since you don't have to grind that. Obviously, you've still got to grind uh, thermals. It does get Gen 2 thermals, however, it does not get Commander thermals, which kind of annoyed me, but hey ho, we can deal with it. Obviously, this thing it's not really going to be too useful against APFSDS given the fact that you know it's ERA elements and so on, composite armor. Eight, Dark rounds are most likely going to go straight through most of it, at the sides and whatnot. However, it's very good for ATGMs such as well from helis and whatnot. It can sponge a lot of shots from them. Um, most tanks will obviously they're going to be able to pen your lower plate. See there, and 200 millimeters upper front plate. Same, same. Obviously, obviously the turret cheeks on this are still extremely strong as the original Charlie two. So in a very hold down position, it's going to be. To very very good tank um, yeah standard for a crew still use the L26 round uh, I think it still uses the same engine CV126A yep still use the same engine as well so obviously that's also going to contribute to its lack of mobility when it obviously gains weight with the armor package um, yeah so overall I mean it's really just another it's just exactly the same challenger too except with a bit of extra added armor against the ATGMs. So um, yeah, and we'll jump into some gameplay and well, you can see if you think it's worth it. Okay, so here we are in the game. We're on Domination Normandy. I'm gonna aim to push in between the camp of <laughs> straight from the get-go. You can clearly see how this thing lacks in ability, absolutely terrible acceleration. It's an absolute beast of a tank. Attacks get caught by active teams as per usual. The allies run away to lock in. So let's see, let's take control of the outskirts of the deep cap. So here's what I mean you got obviously you've got your Gen 2 thermals for your gunner's site, however, you do not have any thermals for your commander. I mean, one thing you can be grateful for is the fact that this thing does get dark stock. I mean, there's a few top tier tanks that obviously you did only have to see the first, such as the Leopard, I think the Leopard 2 can? I'm not too sure. Uh, I'll have to check that one. This is quite a one.
Now obviously you're probably going to be better off using this bank of my pin because it's extremely strong, extremely strong for the cheap. However, I prefer to always push it to the town and then do This thing still has a very good reverse feel like the old, well, fourth challenge really. Another thing that kind of bothers me about this tank is obviously as you can see the extremely slow turret turn. Sometimes it can be a pain but if you play it like it's supposed to be all down, it shouldn't be an issue. Emphasis on that, as that is probably going to be one of your main weaknesses in the challenge. I mean, it's, it's not exactly slow, but it's not exactly fast either. Like, one of the slowest NBTs, I think it is the slowest. But then again, if you can get to a good position early enough in the game, you can do extremely well. Apologies if you can still hear that buzzing in the background, I've got my fan on in my room because it's extremely warm where I am right now. Oh, that thing is the bane of my existence. I think it's the STRF that can fire rapid fire a GFSDS like the Opera Magic. Absolutely annihilating those things.
So as you can see from that game, in the right situations this can be an extremely, extremely strong tank. However, don't expect to be getting games like that a lot, as I mean, currently at top tier right now, it seems that the allied teams do be getting stomped a lot more, and that is probably one of the rarer occurrences I've seen of the allied team absolutely annihilating the Axis, but hey ho. But yeah, we you get this tank along with the original Challenger 2 most of the time, you will be playing in a hold down position. I mean, you can play it aggressive and it can pay off, however, it's I would not recommend it like I just did there. You can have you can have a fun time in this tank. It's just it just purely depends on you how skilled you are. I do think it has a relatively high skill cap compared to something like the two A five, which I also think is an extremely good tank. But yeah, that's just part and parcel of playing the British, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, apologise for the uh, the buzzing, and I hope to see you around. See ya.